Action. Let's talk about diving boards. So here's a picture of a guy who's about to jump off the diving board. And I want to know, what are the forces on these two things? We know there are forces there. We know we need them there. For one, they've got to balance his weight coming down on the force of gravity. But when he jumps off the diving board, what are these forces? Let's, let's take a look here. Here's a, a makeshift diving board. And here's our man. And when he, when he jumps down, you can see that it bows up here where my thumbs point. So the, this side has to be pulling it down, whereas you can see right here, the force here has to be pushing it up. So let's, let's write that in. So here we have a downward force, we'll call this F1, and here we got an upward force, we'll call that F2. And of course we also know we have the force of gravity due to his weight, and that's mg. So, well, the first instinct would probably be to apply Newton's laws. We know sum of the forces equals ma, and we only care about the y direction in this problem. Well, let's add them up. We've got the force of gravity, mg, a lot of people call that his weight, same thing, plus f2 minus f1, and, and when he's standing there, there's zero acceleration. So we don't have enough information to solve this problem. So we need to think about torque as well. And I'll put that over here, some of the torques equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. This, again, is zero because he's not accelerating at the moment. And let's think about the torque. When you apply a torque problem, you need to choose a pivot point. Now, if we choose one of these guys as our pivot point, for example, this guy, then the perpendicular distance is zero and we'll only have two variables. Because remember that by definition, torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the application of the force, so for example from F2, to the pivot point. And let's draw that in. So in this case, if I'm talking about the torque provided by F2, that's this distance here, which is 3 meters and it's perpendicular. So we can uh, put that in, the, the torque from F2, I'll call it torque 2. Well, it's simply this force, F2, multiplied by 3 meters. Well, we also have F1, but we don't have to worry about F1, because the torque on F1, I'll put it here, F1 times 0 equals 0. So when I choose a pivot point right here, it eliminates the torque from this guy. I mean, you can think about it. If, if this is the pivot, the rotation axis, there's, there's no torque right here. But if I have a mass here, it's going to pro provide a torque and make it rotate. So for this guy, the perpendicular distance well, it's this distance here, it's uh, 7 meters plus 3 meters, so it's 10 meters. So we can uh, write that in here, torque from the weight of the man at the end, and then that's just mg times 10 meters. So the torque, the torque provided by F2 if for this pivot point, well, the force is up, here's the pivot, it's going to cause it to rotate like this. So rotational direction like this. Now, for the torque of the uh, force of gravity, force is downward, here's the pivot point, so you can see it's going to cause it to rotate like this. So, they're in opposite directions. Um, doesn't matter, but let's choose this one to be the positive and this one to be the negative. So then we have F2 times 3 meters minus, oh, I need a little more space here, 
minus mg times 10 meters, all equal to zero. And now we can uh, solve for F2. I know that the mass, we've set it to 80 kilograms. Acceleration gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So canceling off the uh, units of meters, we just have 3F2 uh, minus 80 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared times 10 equals 0. And therefore, 3F2 is equal to 808,000 newtons, or F2 is equal to 8,000 newtons divided by 3, which is, what is that, 2, it's about 2,000 rounding 700 newtons. So there's our value for F2, and then once we know F2, we can plug in here to get F1. So we have uh, 800 newtons plus the 2,700 newtons minus F1 equals zero, and therefore F1 has to equal the 2,700 minus the 800, which is 1,900. Newtons. Great. Great. So next time you jump off a diving board, before you jump, you might want to do a few calculations to make sure the diving board can handle these two forces respectively.